Hey guys, you know, we've talked about green investing, you know, socially responsible investing, but what about marketing, right? Because there is such a thing as green marketing, right? And that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. Like, what is green marketing, how it works, an example, and stuff like that, right? So let's start off with what it is, all right? What is green marketing? Well, green marketing refers to the practice of developing and advertising products based on their real or perceived environmental sustainability, some of these examples could be you know, advertising to re the reduced emissions associated with a product's manufacturing process, or even the use of post-consumer recycled materials for a product's packaging. Now, some companies also may market themselves as being environmentally conscious companies by donating a portion of their sale proceeds to environmental initiatives, such as you know, like planting trees and stuff like that. When a company's green marketing activities are not substantiated by significant investments or operational changes, they could be criticized for false or misleading advertising. This practice is also sometimes referred to as greenwashing, right? But let's get into how it works, right? How does, how does green marketing work, right? Like, I, I mean, green marketing is it's one component, you know, of a broader movement towards the socially and environmentally conscious business practices. Increasingly, though, consumers have come to expect companies to demonstrate their commitment to improving their operations alongside various, you know, environmental, social, and governance criteria, right? You might see that in other places, abbreviated as ESG, right? But, you know, to that end, there's a lot of companies that will distribute social impact statements on an ongoing basis in which they, you know, occasionally, periodically self-report on their progress towards those goals, right? Now, typical examples, you know, of environmental, social, you know, and government-related improvements include, you know, the reduction of carbon emissions involved in a company's operations, the maintenance of high labor standards, both domestically and throughout international supply chains, and philanthropic programs designed to support, you know, the communities where those companies operate at, right? Now, although green marketing refers specifically to environmental initiatives, these efforts are increasingly presented alongside social and corporate governance policies as well. And of course, you know, there's going to be, you know, and there are many incentives for companies that choose to engage in green marketing, right? To start off with, I mean... A company's perceived commitment to environmental causes is an increasingly important factor influencing, you know, a bunch of consumer spending habits, right? Um, there's a, a survey uh, back in 2014 called the, uh, the Nielsen Global Survey on Corporate Responsibility, right? And they found that roughly about, you know, 50 to 55% of consumers were willing to accept higher prices from companies deemed to have a positive social and environmental impact, right? That's a 10% increase from the previous survey they did in 2011. Now, in some regions, you know, Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East, this attitude was even more common, shared by closer to 60-65% of the people who responded in 2014. Okay, well, what would be a real-world example of this, right? Like, what's a, what's a real-world example? Well, let's take a look at Starbucks, right? Starbucks is often cited as a leader in green marketing practices, yeah? I mean, the company has invested really heavily in various social and environmental initiatives, right? Especially here in the past couple of years, right? So, for example, a couple of years ago, in its 2019 Global Social Impact Report, Starbucks reported that it had committed over $100 million to the deployment of renewable energy sources. You know, the company now purchases enough renewable energy to power all of its company-operated stores throughout North America and the UK, right? Now, similarly, the company has made investments in social impact projects through initiatives, you know, such as the uh, Starbucks College Achievement Plan. Right. And with this project or, you know, through this project, a lot of U.S. based Starbucks employees who work more than 20 hours a week on average, 
you know, they're eligible to receive fully paid tuition to the online undergraduate degree program offered by Arizona State University. Now, this project, as well as similar commitments in areas related to the employment of veterans, you know, they formed an important part of Starbucks green marketing initiatives. Well, from an investor's point of view, you know, these kinds of you know, these kinds of green marketing initiatives can prove essential in building and maintaining a valuable brand, right? Particularly for consumer facing companies, you know, you know, like Starbucks, right? However, some critics are gonna argue that green marketing can exacerbate the existing advantages of larger companies at the expense of their small or mid-sized competitors, right? I mean, after all, implementing, you know, these robust, you know, really big social or environmental programs often involves just a whole bunch of additional overhead costs that, you know, your average store just really can't compete with, right? So for large companies, these costs can easily be, you know, taken on, right? And may even form part of the company's existing marketing budget, right? I mean, it's going to cost a lot of money to do these programs. For smaller companies, you know, these additional costs may significantly impair profitability or viability of the business, right? Maybe they won't be able to grow the business or maybe, you know, they can't hire the help they need or maybe they start struggling to even, you know, pay for, you know, their mortgage or, you know, just you never know. Like the cost can get really, really high, right? So then what are the key takeaways here? Like what what do we learn from all of this? You know, the good, the bad and all that. Well, first, green marketing, right? It, what it does is it describes a company's efforts to advertise the environmental sustainability of its business practices, right? Then the second one's going to be the emergence of a consumer population that's becoming increasingly concerned with environmental and social factors has led to green marketing becoming an important component of corporate public relations, right? Thirdly, and lastly, one criticism of green marketing practices is that they tend to favor large corporations that can absorb the additional costs entailed by these programs, right? So I really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. If you liked it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you did. Until I see you guys in the next video, y'all be safe.